Hey guys, it's Tiny, just Tiny, uh, here today to answer a question we get asked quite often at the shop and uh, kind of just touch base and give you guys some more knowledge. As you probably know, your engine works by ingesting air and fuel and some uh, you know, chemical reactions with inside the engine and uh, eventually this moves a bunch of other moving parts and makes it to your wheels. There are two common ways of uh, determining the amount of air being ingested into the engine and when they're not set up properly, well, uh, things don't go that great. We'll get into that later. We're gonna go over one of our more frequently asked questions, uh, something we get a lot at the shop. Uh, what's the difference between a math-based load calculation and a speed density-based load calculation? Today, we'll go over what each system does, how it works, the benefits, the drawbacks, and uh, overall, what's the best choice for you. First, we're gonna go over speed density and how that operates. Um, speed density first takes in the inlet air temp and then references the uh, MAP sensor and combines those two measurements to calculate an air density within the ECU. From there it takes that, references in the RPM pickup, and then will determine what load value, what load cell that the engine is currently operating in. From there, it obviously makes internal calculations for the amount of uh, fuel mass that needs to be injected, and that's essentially how that system works with some trimming from some other sensors, whether it's the O2 sensor. If you guys wanna learn more about O2 sensors, let us know, um, whether it's the difference between narrow band and wide band, how they work, how they're calibrated, um, you know, what to do with them, what not to do with them, where to place them, where not to place them. We definitely have a ton of knowledge on that. We know what you guys are wondering. What does the ECU do with all this information? Well, it uses an internal volumetric efficiency lookup table or a base fuel load lookup table to then assign a pulse width, a duty cycle, if you will, a injection window time, so be it uh, for the injectors to inject the correct amount of fuel with the air charge um, based on an AFR or air fuel ratio lookup table within the ECU. Um, then, like we touched on before, the O2 sensor will trim out any imperfections or errors within that system because none of this is perfect. Um, there's always little things that can happen. Even if you have a you know, brand new engine with everything sealed up, there's always gonna be a little bit of an imperfection, a little bit of error between everything. So we'll use the O2 sensors to trim any of that out and uh, really just smooth it all up and uh, make the process work how it needs to. Uh, something to note about uh, speed density systems is they don't actually spit out a airflow calculations, like grams per second, milligrams per stroke, um, like what the next sensor we're gonna talk about does, the mass sensor. Today I'm gonna to be explaining mass airflow sensors, uh, specifically a hot wire mass airflow sensor. The MAF sensor is located in the intake system, pre-turbo on any turbocharged vehicles, uh, in the center of the airflow where it's most clean and consistent without any weird bends or uh, disturbances of the airflow. The way most common MAF sensors you guys are gonna see in cars work is by using a heated wire and an air temperature sensor. So as air moves past the heated wire at different speeds, it's gonna require a different amount of current to keep that wire heated to a certain temperature that's defined within the ECU. And after it takes the calculation or the reading of how much current it took, it spits that into a frequency reading that goes back to the ECU and then into a lookup table that defines exactly how many grams per second, uh, milligrams per stroke, so be it whatever uh, they decide within the manufacturer of the ECU or the tuning software decides to use, it will spit that into a number that's readable to you. Something that you'll wanna know is that this lookup table based on Hertz to airflow uh, is tuned to the diameter of the pipe in which the MAF sensor is located. So by changing that pipe, you will also have to change the specific amount of airflow per hertz um, as it's gonna be different based on how large or small the, the, the pipe is. It's gonna have a different amount of mass air passing through it based on how large the pipe is. If you have a smaller pipe, you have uh, more air density, it's, it's tightly packed together. Whereas if you have a larger pipe, the air is a little bit more spread out, the air stream is a little bit different. So you have to tune the MAF sensor to the diameter of the pipe. Combine this with O2 sensors, which we touched on a little bit earlier, what they do uh, for trimming. These newer MAF systems are very simple, uh, they're pretty genius, and they are pretty good over, you know, overall all-arounders when it comes to really accurately measuring airflow in a tougher, ton of different areas, where, whether it's idle, wide open throttle, or just cruising. Now you're probably wondering, if this is so great, then why do people go back to the old style? 
speed density generally is better at handling a much higher rev range. Uh, when you start to induce more air into the engine, uh, you can start to get uh, disturbances, turbulence, all sorts of stuff that kind of mess up the airflow path within the intake system. So mass sensors will sometimes have a hard time actually measuring uh, consistently and correctly when you start to get into the higher rev ranges or really high load ranges. This is all kind of by a case by case basis. You also get inaccuracies when it comes to increasing the diameter of the pipe. You'll have to do this because there's only a certain range that the MAF sensors can work in. There, it's a set frequency range that they'll work in. So when you reach the top um, of that, you have to increase the diameter of the pipe for the sensor to still work. And as you keep increasing that, it's going to make the sensor more inaccurate in each increment that you go up in size as the amount of air passing through it becomes less and less and the operating range that it's actually working in kind of becomes a little bit more narrow. Whereas speed density systems, you're you know, using sensors that are already there anyways. The uh, MAF-based systems still have an intake air temp sensor. They still have a manifold um, pressure sensor. So all this stuff is still there and you're just essentially changing how the ECU is interpreting all this information that it already has. Also for you guys that are really trying to get every single ounce of performance out of your engine possible. Um, the MAF is just a big tube that's sticking in the center of your intake, so this can also you know, create some disturbances within the airflow characteristics inside the intake. So those guys that are really trying to maximize uh, every single ounce of performance, trying to get everything out of their engine, always at wide open throttle, those are my kind of guys. They might see this as a, as a, um, a negative uh, towards the MAF sensor. They're not gonna be even in the areas that the MAF sensor really shines in, which is in drivability and idle tuning. That's where it really shines. Um, so they might go ahead and move to a speed density system because they're always at wide open throttle and that's really where speed density shines. So like I touched a little bit on at the end there, MAF sensors are really good at taking in low speed air and uh, low throttle inputs and we work really well with those, but both systems essentially do the same thing just in a little bit of a different way. And when it comes to wide open throttle performance, they're, you know, within, you know, a pretty decent margin of, of measuring the same and uh, working similarly. So the, you know, the question that you were all waiting to be answered is what system's best for you? If you're looking for a crazy high horsepower, always pushing the limits, wide open throttle all the time, all you care about is performance, you don't care about drivability, you don't care about gas mileage, none of that stuff, that's what I like to see. You know? Speed density is probably gonna be your up. It's a little bit simpler of a system. Uh, vacuum leaks and air leaks generally don't uh, you know, cause you too much of a headache, whereas a MAF-based system, if you have an air leak post-MAF, uh, you're gonna have probably 0% chance of actually moving and driving. They get really wacky when that happens. If you're looking for a mild, um, you know, daily driver-esque, bring it to the track every once in a while and just kind of have fun with your friends when you can type of build um, and you're not going too crazy, I would stick with a, a MAF-based system as it just promotes a better driving experience overall. It's a better over-rounder. It is, you know, why that they moved away from speed density to MAF and OEMs. There's a reason for it. It just generally works better for drivability's sake. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or want to go more in depth on some of the topics we touched on, such as O2 sensors, uh, let us know in the comments. Also. Um, I'm well-versed, but not an expert in all of this stuff. So if there's anything I misspoke about or anything you have questions about, leave a comment. I'm always there to help promote learning and you know, healthy discussion and criticism of anything. Um, as far as that goes, um, see y'all later. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.